Hello everyone, it's me Jordan back with another Queen album review. And uh uh if you like the last one I did yesterday, um I'm here with another uh Queen album review and today I'm gonna be doing another album, Queen A Night the Opera. Pretty excited to do this one because uh it's such an amazing album and I just love Queen so and then even though I'm doing a Queen album I got my Led Zeppelin shirt on. My second favorite rock band. So, so yeah. Um, Queen, A Night at the Opera, which is Queen's fourth album. And uh, it was released in 1975. And this is so-called their number one album. And I gotta say, I completely agree with that. The people who say this is the number one album because it's just amazing and... Just like my sheer heart attack is my favorite, it has nothing wrong with this album. Nothing is... I am satisfied with every single song in this album. So, uh, yeah, so, okay. So let's, uh, got the case here, and then I'll show you the little booklet. So we got that, that the opera. And then these are all just, um, they're like family animals or something. I, I forgot what it was. And then that's the names and the cursive, so I can't really see them all. So uh, then we got the front. We got some lyrics. Okay, the next page is just some more lyrics. And then we got a group shot of them on stage. Uh, some more lyrics. And then we got some more lyrics. And then uh, we got another photo there. All four members. And yeah, that's it for the booklet. I think it had like one less than the Sheer Heart Attack does. And then here's the CD. Right there. And then I'll close that. And then here's at the back. We have all the songs. Which for you will be backwards, but whatever. So, yeah. Um, so let's take a look. And starting off this amazing album. Death on Two Legs. Okay, so. Death on Two Legs. It's an amazing song. Uh, the piano in it, the very beginning is just so like, it's just so amazing, and it's probably like one of their. I think it's probably the best starters to an album for Queen. I mean, Bright and Rock is another one that I said, but Death on Two Legs is probably my favorite Queen album starter track that they have. So. And then, if you can see, it says Death on Two Legs Dedicated To. And if you, anyone was ever confused about what the, the Dedicated To means is, well, Freddie Mercury wrote the song, and he wrote it about their um, old manager, who was a, a mean guy who pretty much didn't treat the band fairly and didn't pay them enough of the money, and he made the song. And if you read the lyrics, it's pretty much Freddie just showing his anger towards him. So that's dedicated to, and then the manager, if anyone was wondering. And then, okay, so uh, that's track one, and we get track two is Lazy on a Sunday Afternoon, which is probably my favorite song off the album. And I think it's, yeah, yep, yeah, it's the shortest song on the album, but it's my favorite because the piano is just so catchy at the beginning, and then even though it's a one-minute song, they still have... They still found time to fit in a amazing guitar solo, which is one of my favorite guitar solos. Even though it's only like, probably like 15 seconds, but it's just so catchy and uh, I love a guitar solo on that. And then the pretty much ending leads right into the third track, which is I'm in Love With My Car. Which is written and sung by Roger Taylor. I think it's pretty weird. <laughs> That on their last album, the third track was sung and written by Roger Taylor, Tenement and Funster, and this one, but maybe it's just the tradition or anything, but whatever. So, I'm in love with my car, an amazing song. Uh, Roger Taylor wrote it about his car, or I think, I don't think it was Roger Taylor's love for cars. I think it was one of his friends, I think, but um, it's just so catchy, and it's definitely, for sure, the number one Roger Taylor song. Sung, written and sung by him because you know he has a good voice too so that's a really good song and then leading on to the fourth track is their first single off the album which is You're My Best Friend which is an amazing song and this was to me what was 
when John Deacon pretty much just came out and st started to participate in the group because this was the first single he ever wrote for the group, You're My Best Friend. So it was written by John Deacon. You, you, if you've seen the video, you can even see him playing the uh, electric piano. He plays a bit of piano. And uh, so he pretty much came up with the song and he said, I, I want to make a hit single. And this is still, for today, one of the greatest Queen songs. Played on radios uh, a lot, still. And I know how to play on keyboard and... Uh, it's just a good song. So yeah, that's track four. And then track five, we have, I think, the first song on this album that's written by Brian May. And that is 39. Uh, probably the weirdest title because it's numbers. And most bands will have songs with numbers, I don't think. It's the only Queen song that only has numbers in it. So that's pretty cool. And 39. And then I don't know what 39 means, but it's... The weird thing about it, and why it's so awesome, is that it's a folk, like, kind of like country, but I would say more folk, um, uh, song, and it's written about time travel. I mean, no, I'm sorry, sorry, space travel. Brian Ray wrote it about, uh, space travel, and if you don't know already, Brian May, the guitarist, is actually very smart, and he is, uh, ash he, he, uh, like, a scientist, and he knows a lot about space travel, and he's, I think he's... He works a lot with like NASA and stuff, and so he's uh, into that stuff. But that's track five thirty nine, and then on track six we have "Sweet Lady," um, and this is a good song too. Uh, I'm gonna probably say it's written by Freddie or maybe Brian, but it's a really good song. Um, and uh, I don't know what it's written about, but it's got a catchy thing, and you know that's a good song. And then after that is Seaside Rendezvous, track 7. That's a really good song. It's probably like one of my, I think my top 3, my favorite songs in this album. Because I love like uh, guitar solo. I don't think it's a guitar though. I think it's like an oboe or something or a clarinet solo. And it just fits in so perfectly and I really like it. And just like Lizzie on the sound here, it's only like a few seconds. Like around like 20 seconds, but... It's a good catchy guitar solo on that, or no, not guitar though, um, oboe or something, and that's a good song. So then after that we have the Prophet song. Okay, probably one of the big reasons why this album is so amazing is the Prophet song. Okay, this is a very amazing, amazing underrated Queen song, written by. Actually, you know what? I think I'll just check. Actually, who was written by? It says in the booklet. Uh, so, yeah, "Sweet Lady" was written by Brian May. "Seaside Rendezvous" by Freddie. And the "Prophet" song is written by Brian May. Okay. Okay, so the "Prophet" song. Now it was written by Brian May, and it is just amazing. So underrated. And if you haven't listened to it, make sure to listen to it because it's very good. Um. I and mean, I love, like, uh, what, uh, I forgot what the instrument was, but, uh, but Brian May was playing in, like, uh, something, probably like a mandolin or something at the beginning of the song, which is, I thought was pretty cool. And, so, yeah, secretly, it's probably one of their best songs. Kind of like the March of the Black Queen, um, and Andy Window, but people don't really know those songs, but they're amazing. Make sure to listen to that. Anyway, so, I think this is, uh, track... Not, uh, yeah, not track nine. We have Love of My Life. Um, a good song. It was written by Freddie Mercury. Uh, you probably know two versions of the song, or may prop maybe one, but the version on this one is, uh, more of the piano version. And if you see them live, you'll usually say I'm playing on guitar. So what's that? So this was the original version written on the piano by Freddie Mercury, but it usually gets played at concerts on the guitar but that doesn't really matter because it's an amazing song it's kind of like a slow slow ballad and it's a really good song and yeah it's my one of my my nana's favorite queen song so it's it's a good one um okay so track 10 we have good company written by 
Brian May, um, obviously, and he plays it on the ukulele, I'm pretty sure, or banjo, I, I don't really know, but, or is it, no, it's not harp, yeah, it's written on the, uh, ukulele, and it's a good catchy song, kind of like Lazy on Sunday Afternoon, and, uh, and, uh, Seaside Rendezvous, it's another good catchy song, and, yeah, and then, oh, god, what can I say about the next track in this album? So, right after that little silly one, we have, for sure, Queen's greatest song of all time. If you do not know this song, there's something wrong with you, because if you haven't listened to this song... You have to listen to this song because this is amazing. It's the number one Queen song, and it is called Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, I really shouldn't explain it, but um, just in case there's anyone new, Bohemian Rhapsody was Queen's greatest song. It's progressive. It's got a lot of instruments. It has good, amazing guitar solos. One of the best guitar solos of all time. It gets played on the radio a lot, and. Uh, has an amazing piano and guitar solo on it, so make sure to listen to it, even though you probably already have. If you haven't, well, I don't know what to say. But so that's track eleven, and if even if they couldn't end it off with such an amazing song like that, they decide to even put the twelfth track, which is "God Save the Queen," probably one of Queen's only. I think it actually is. Maybe there's one more. Maybe I don't know, but. God Save the Queen is an instrumental song, no lyrics, and it's pretty much, if you watch their concerts, uh, they always ended off with God Save the Queen, and it was written by Brian May. Um, so, it's probably their best uh, ending off the album, because they usually end off concerts and this album with it. And it's kind of just like, uh, I think it's like a two minutes long. And it's a, it's a good song. I mean, I wouldn't really listen to it ever by itself because it's, there's not really any lyrics. It's kind of just kind of instrumental. But on the album, make sure to listen to it. And and at a concert, when like the whole band is going off stage, you'll hear the song playing. So yeah, guys, that was my second Queen album review, A Night at the Opera, their fourth album in 1975, and. Um, so I'll say my favorite song of this album is either, okay, I'll say two, which either one, and it's either Lazy on a Sunday Afternoon, or maybe, I'm gonna say it's Lazy on a Sunday Afternoon, or The Prophet Song, because like I said, The Prophet Song is so underrated, and it's such an amazing song, and then probably my least favorite, and don't take it personal, because even though it's my least favorite, it's still an amazing song that I would listen to any day because this album is amazing. But my least favorite has got to be Good Company. I mean, it's creative that they play on ukulele, but, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of a the sound of a ukulele, even though it's kind of like a guitar. But anyway, that's my least favorite song of the album off this amazing album. And so I hope you enjoyed. Remember to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't, Comment what you think, what your favorite song or your least favorite song off the album is. And uh, so it's the weekend now, so I'm probably going to do some more this weekend. Maybe, pr for sure, probably even more today. So look forward for that. And I'll see you all next time. Peace.